Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover basically most every string function that you'll ever need that hasn't already previously been covered. As well, I'll display some examples with a brief explanation of which, and also I'll hit you with some problems. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to create a random string that will perform all sorts of operations on, one of which is to get rid of white space. And I'm just going to say this is an important string, just like I did before. And there you go, there's all kinds of white space. Whoops, I'll get rid of that. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is show you how to delete white space on the left. So I'm going to say random string again is equal to and random string and L strip left strip that's going to get rid of the white space on the left and then R strip is going to get rid of the white space on the right and if you go in here and you print it for the very least you're going to see that there's no white space on the left and you're just going to have to trust me that there's no white space over here okay and you could also just skip all of the left and right stuff just by using strip instead that's going to get rid of the left and the right what else could we do? Well, how about we come in and I'll show you how to capitalize a string. And all of these things are going to seem like they are not useful right up until the point where they are useful. So just keep that in mind. And how we would capitalize a string is just come in and capitalize. That's it. And there you can see it is capitalized even though it wasn't previously. You're going to be able to convert to uppercase just by going upper exactly like that. Now it's uppercase, you're going to be lowercase, but you're not going to be able to tell because it's already lowercase. Just trust me that that works. And now I want to give you another example. Lists are going to be covered here pretty soon in a later tutorial, but I want to show them briefly here because I want to show how you can turn a list into a string and then separate each item based off of defining that you want them separated with a space. So this is how you create a list. Just use brackets like this and commas. And each of those is an individual item. And each of them has an index that starts at zero. So there we are. There is our list. Now, if I would like to take that list and turn it into a string with spaces in between, first I define that I want spaces in between. And then I follow that up with join. And then I say whatever the list name is. And I save it and there you go there is your string now a space right here was defined as the thing that would separate the items in this example and something that is used to separate data is also called a delimiter so for example if we had pig cow and turtle the delimiter in this situation would be a comma and a space and I showed you how to turn a list into a string. Now I'm going to show you how to turn a string into a list. Again, we can use random string. And then we can say a list two. All you need to do is go random string like that and split. Remember split? Well, there's split again. That's what it's doing is converting a string into a list. And we're going to be able to print out each of those items in our list just by going for I in a list. We've covered this before, but just thought I'd cover it again. And there you can see they were all printed on separate lines. We're also going to be able to find how many times a string occurs inside of another string. So let's just come in here and get rid of that. And I'm gonna say how many is, how many is, and then to find the number, you just say random string like that and count and then we can say the string that we're looking for which is is and if we hit enter it's going to come back as two why does it come back as two because there's an is right there and there's an is right there but what if we want to find out the location meaning the index for a string we can say where is and random string and then follow that up with find and then specifically what are we looking for let's say we're looking for the word string you can see that that's at the 21st index, which begins right here. We can also come in and replace a string just by saying replace. And then specifically what we are looking for, I'm going to say that I am specifically looking for the word an or the string an, I guess I should say. 
And then I'm going to replace it with a kind of. And if we run it, it comes back with this mess. Well, why does it come back with that mess? Well, the reason why is I have this guy. This is an. We wanted to replace the an, but it also replaced this an. So how can we get rid of this an right here? Well, we can just put a space inside of it, run it again, and now you'll see this is a kind of important string. And then we can play around with the spaces and so forth to get that to look great. All right, so there's some functions we can use with our strings. And now it's time for you to solve another problem. All right, so what I want you to do this time to test everything you learned is for you to create an acronym generator. The user will be able to enter a string and then can, you will create an acronym from it. And how you do that is if they enter random ac access memory, you're just going to take the first three letters and create an acronym. Okay, so you can pause the video and give that a try. Otherwise, I'm going to provide the solution right now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say original string is equal to input get the acronym from the user so convert to acronym then I want to convert the string to all uppercase just because that's going to help me out so I'm going to go original string is equal to original string and upper then I want to convert the string into a list so I'm going to call this list of words is equal to and original string and then I'm going to split it and if you don't put anything inside of there it's going to go and split it at all these individual spaces then what I can do is cycle through this list list of words and then get the first letter of each of those words and eliminate the new lines so I'll say print word get the first index that's zero and then end equal to nothing in between quotes to get rid of those new lines and then I could throw a print in here to get a new line as well and if I do that I could come in and say random access memory and it's gonna pop back RAM alright so hopefully you got that right if you didn't that is okay whole idea is just to get you to think in new ways and now we're gonna cover some more string functions I'm going to create letter Z is equal to and then just throw Z inside of here and then ask some questions. One of them is going to be is Z a letter or number? And what I'm saying here is is it true that the letter Z is either a letter or a number? And how you find that out is just go letter Z, follow that up with is all num comes back as true of course because it is a letter now if you would like to come in and check if our variable with the letter Z inside of it only contains letters you can do that as well just get rid of this part right here and I'm gonna say is alpha run it of course it comes back as true if I wanted to check if it is a digit or a number I guess I should say I just say is digit comes back as false. I can check if the string I'm providing is going to be all in lowercase. So I can say is lower. Comes back as true. I can also check if it is in uppercase. Comes back as false of course. I can check if the string only contains white space of one type or another. Is space. Comes back as false. And with that additional useful information, now it's time for you to solve another problem. All right, so this problem's really going to rack your brain, so don't worry if you can't solve it. Just feel free to use all the resources of the Internet to give it a try, including my tutorial, Stack Overflow, anything you could like. What we're going to try to do here is to make what is called a Caesar cipher. Now, encryption is super popular, so let's take a look at one of the first ways to encrypt or create secret messages. What you're going to need to do is to first receive a message and then encrypt it by shifting the characters by a requested amount to the right. So for example, A becomes D, B becomes E, and so forth and so on. 
Your program also is then also going to need to be able to decrypt the message back to its original form again. And I'm going to provide you with a couple hints. We talked previously about Unicodes. These are the Unicodes for the capital letter A through Z. You're going to have the lowercase letter Unicodes right here. You're going to be able to get the Unicode of a character by going ORD and whatever your letter is. You're also going to be able to convert from Unicode uh, to a character by going CHR and whatever the number Unicode is. You should use is upper to decide which Unicodes that you wish to work with. Also, you're going to want to add the key, and the key represents the number of characters to shift. And if bigger or smaller than the Unicode for A through Z or lowercase a through Z, you're going to need to increase or decrease by 26 because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. All right, so there it is. Give it a go. And otherwise, I'm going to show you the solution right now. All right, so let's think through what we're going to need to do. The very first thing we're going to need to do is receive the message that you need to encrypt, as well as the number of characters that the user wants to shift those characters. So I'm going to start off by defining a variable message and input, and I'm going to say enter a or enter your message. Now that I got that, I'm also going to say that I want to know how many I need to shift. So I'm going to convert this input, string input, from the user into an integer. So I'll say, how many characters should we shift? And I'm going to say 1 through 26 is what I'm specifically looking for here. All right, so now I got the message and the number of characters I need to shift. Then what I need to do is I'm going to have a secret message that I need to output on the screen. So I'm going to create that. Then I want to cycle through each character inside of my message. So I'm going to say for character in message. Then if it isn't a letter, I want to keep it as it is. So I'm going to say if character is alpha. Say a lot of things to think about here. Then I want to get the character code by saying character code and using ORD with each individual character. I'm then going to go character code once again. And I'm going to shift it over based off of the number of, that they told me they want me to shift all the letters. Now I want to say if it is uppercase, then I want to compare to uppercase Unicodes. So I'm going to say if character is upper. If it's bigger than Z, I need to subtract 26 from it. Otherwise, I'm going to add 26 if the character code is less than A. And that's going to effectively just move me from the beginning or the end of the Unicode for the letters since there's 26 total letters we're working with. So I'll say if character code is greater than ORD Z. Well, in that situation, I'm going to say character code because we're shifting these characters is going to be equal to itself minus 26. Else if the character code is less than A, well, that means I need to move it forward. So let's go A. Well, in that situation, character code plus or equal 26. Then I want to jump back and I'm going to say else if it's lowercase and then I'm basically going to do a similar thing here except I'm going to do it with lowercase letters. So I'm going to say this is going to be changed to a Z, lowercase Z, and this is going to get changed to a lowercase A. After I do that, I'm then going to be able to come in and get secret message and add our new character code to it. Character, character code. Or what I mean is I need to convert from the code back to the letter to add it to the message. If it is not a letter, so we're going to come out here, which is going to line up with this guy right here. I'm just going to say else. And if they enter anything that's not a letter, I'm going to say secret message plus equal to whatever that character is. Then that's all I need to do to get all of that to convert it into a secret message. So I'll say print 
encrypted, and then print out my secret message on the screen. I'm going to go and test it ahead of time just to see that it worked. A dog is big. I don't know. How many characters should we shift? We'll say three. And there we go. That is what we got currently with our secret message. Now what we need to do is shift it back. Now to shift it back or to decrypt, the only thing that changes is the sign of key. So I'm going to say key is equal to minus key. I'm then going to go original message in, zero that out, and I'll say for each character in the secret message if the character is alpha we're basically going to do the same exact thing well I need to get the character code by using ORD on the character character code again then add the key to the character code which is going to move it back then I'll say if character is upper because I'm working with different parts of the Unicode for this. If the character code is greater than uppercase Z, well then I'm going to say character code and move it towards the A by subtracting from 26. Likewise, I'll say else if character code is less than uppercase A, well then I need to add 26 to go back towards the Z. Just looking familiar, this is basically exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to say else, go and get this guy, paste that inside of there. I'm going to say original message plus equal to, change the code into a character, add it to the original message, and then else, this is going to be a situation once again where we're dealing with something that is not a letter. So I'm going to say original message plus equal to whatever that character is unedited. And then after I do all of that stuff, I can say print decrypted and provide the original message again. And here is our message. Make this secret. How many characters should I shift? I'm just going to say five. And you can see there it encrypted it and there it decrypted it. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that and awesome job if you actually were able to solve it. That's really cool. But even if not, even if you just understood the code and what I was doing, that's great. The goal here, remember, is just to make you think like a programmer and to understand the finished codes. I'm going to give you a break this time and not force you to do a quiz since the problems were super difficult this time. But I will not be easy on you next time. And in the next video, we're going to finally start talking about functions. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below.